Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we again do not taste the whiskey today. No, uh, I tell you how to remove a cork from the inside of a bottle. Well, part of a cork. Um, if a cork breaks during opening and you're not able to, to fiddle the last part of the cork out, then a lot of people uh, push it with a thumb into the bottle and then it swims inside the bottle and it looks a little ugly and well they are not amused to see that and they would like to to get the <laughs> the part of the residue of a cork out of this whiskey as fast as they can. Uh, the typical failure of a cork is done by well the user the problem is not inside the bottle, the problem stays in front of the bottle because people do not know how to open a bottle the right way. Therefore, I took this video to tell you uh, from my personal well, mechanical engineering standpoint uh, how to remove a cork from a bottle. So, but if things happen, shit happen, sorry, happens, um, we have to do something about uh, against that. Well, here we have the Dalwini, 29 years old, and I took a video of this one already, and it's a wonderful, a wonder, really wonderful whiskey, and, uh, well, how to do that? Well, uh, one thing is uh, you, pull, uh, you pour out the whiskey into uh, something different, in a different bottle, uh, and then, uh, well, you dump this bottle and uh, you stay with the other one. This is a solution, but I personally uh, like to have the original bottle. Yeah, I want to see the whiskey in the surrounding, in its micro surrounding. Uh, the people thought it would be best for this whiskey. Yeah, uh, to make things short, this is a wine cork, which does not really fit to this bottle. Um, and here, half or more than half of this cork swims in the whiskey. The first thing is you pour the whiskey out of the bottle. And uh, there's always said, oh, if you're pouring whiskey out of a bottle completely or in a carafe uh, for, your, for a bar presenter, uh, then you're... Uh, increasing oxidization inside a whiskey. That's true for young whiskey, that's especially true for pity whiskey, where a lot of, well, not fully oxidized uh, compounds from the combustion, from the incomplete combustion of the peat uh, is in the whiskey. This may oxidize and the young whiskey may also oxidize, but if a whiskey laid for 29 years in a cask, and this cask had breathed with the surrounding. So in winter, uh, whiskey compresses and tears fresh air in, and in summer it expands, and it expands quite a lot. It's more than a percent in volume. Um, then you can see how the cask breathes, and then fresh oxygen, com oxygen comes in, and oxidati oxidization is enforced. So this one is old, 99.9% .9 oxidized, so there's no I have no fear that this pouring uh, will change the taste of the whiskey, but I'm pouring, well, with a gentle hand and so that no air is, uh, is swirled inside the whiskey and there are no uh, bubbles inside the whiskey. Just gently pour it out. and uh, make sure that the cork is not blocking uh, the opening of the bottle. And uh, here I can see there are some smaller parts of the cork uh, also staying inside the bottle and if there's too much of this <laughs> debris uh, inside the bottle, well then you have to use a a tea filter, a paper filter, cellulosis from cellulosis, with which you uh, 
you make your tea. Fresh tea, not a tea bag. No. Um, and th with this uh, tea filters, uh, you can uh, clean up. So here you see, there's still some tippers left. So how to remove it? It's really easy. Um, you take a plastic bag like this one from the fridge or the freezer. You move it inside the bottle. Then you shake uh, the bottle that the cork moves is, moves to the top, and then you inflate uh, the bag, but not too much, because if you inflate it too much, then it will be torn apart if you tear on it. Now you can see the inflating. Now you push the cork to the bottom and now ah, a little bit too much of air inside. And here we go. Here's the cork. Ah, very good, it's no TCA in it, no weird excrements of bacteria, which is smelling so bad. No, the cork is all right, and the whiskey has been all right when I tasted it. So I will clean up the bottle, uh, fill it up with whiskey again. Again, uh, be careful, so I have a, a stable hand, so I will do it. And what is very important is that you have spare corks. This is <laughs> the other half of the cork. And here you can see uh, there's nothing uh, bad in it. It's just, well, it was a rough hand breaking this cork apart. And uh, yeah, this was the way. Um, and I have a, a wooden box of Nokandu of an old Nokandu, which is empty now, and uh, whenever I, I dump a bottle, a litter of bottle, uh, I take the cork, look at it, well, it looks quite good, into this box. And uh, when I have something like this, I look in it, and most often I find a fitting cork. There are differences, there are millimeters different differences between those corks, and you will have to have a dozen or two dozen uh, used corks uh, just to be sure to have one in the case you need it. So, thank you for watching. There's more to come. Stay tuned. If you want to discuss this video with me, please do so in our forum on whiskey.com and please share this video with your friends that they know how to remove a broken cork from inside a bottle. It will also uh, fit this uh, procedure will also fit for a bottle of wine yeah thank you very much for watching